Even the combined might of Nathan Lane and Frankie Valley can't heat up today's lukewarm episode of Miami Vice. Season 2 is Miami Vice's strongest by a considerable margin, with the highest ratio of standout episodes to duds. That doesn't mean it's entirely free of clunkers, however, and Buddies, which was written by Frank Military, who played one of the lawless thugs in last season's Nobody Lives Forever, and directed by Harry Master George, is pretty weak. Crockett goes out drinking with his hard-living army buddy Robbie, with whom he served in Vietnam, in a scene ironically scored to Canadian rocker Kim Mitchell's 1984 PM to sobriety, Go for Soda. Robbie's wife just had a baby, and he's in the mood to celebrate. While drunkenly dancing on a pool table and rocking out to Sweet Soul Music, the 1967 hit by Arthur Conley, Robbie gets into a brawl with a bouncer, which turns violent. Robbie escalates the situation beyond Crockett's ability to contain it, and they both end up getting booted out of the bar. Robbie is played by James Ramar, who's one of those busy actors who crops up all over the place in film and television and all kinds of genres from the 1980s to the present. You've undoubtedly seen him in something or other. I can't begin to guess what you know him from. For me, he's the guy who replaced Christopher Lambert as Raiden in Mortal Kombat Annihilation because I spent the entire 90s watching films based on video games. In what seems at first like an unrelated plotline, a young woman named Dorothy, played by Hungarian singer-songwriter Esther Ballant, fumbles her way through a waitressing job at a hotel run by two mobsters, Johnny Canada, played by Tom Signorelli, and his business partner Frank Doss, played by famed singer Frankie Valli, frontman of the Four Seasons, and possessor of that magnificent falsetto on Big Girls Don't Cry, Walk Like a Man, and Sherry. In a sequence scored to Shaka Khan's Own the Night, which was written and recorded exclusively for Miami Vice, Dorothy, who is on the run from her abusive husband with her young baby in tow is fired from her job. Stand-up comic Morty Price, played by Broadway superstar and three-time Tony winner Nathan Lane, takes her back to his hotel suite and tries to rape her, so Dorothy stabs him to death with a steak knife. She flees the crime scene, taking with her some incriminating betting papers belonging to Kanata and Doss. When Crockett and Tubbs arrive at Dorothy's motel to question her, they find her under attack from mob hitmen looking to retrieve the papers. Crockett and Tubbs fight them off, but Dorothy manages to flee. Dorothy and her baby end up staying with a good Samaritan, who happens to be Ample Annie, the stripper that Vice's informant Noogie ended up marrying in last season's Made for Each Other. Ample Annie is intended to be a zany character, and my feelings on zany Miami Vice subplots are well documented, but Carla Tamborelli does a nice job of giving her genuine warmth and vibrance. Surveillance of the hotel reveals that Crockett's friend Robbie met with Dawson Kanata to repay money he borrowed to open a hot new nightclub. Crockett is reluctant to believe his friend could be involved in anything shady, so Tubbs does some digging on his own and discovers that Robbie is Kanata's son. Crockett confronts Robbie to see if he can help Vice find Dorothy before his father's goons murder her in a scene that lasts, by my rough estimate, about 8 million years. I tried timing it, but then I think I slipped through a hole in the space-time continuum, and by the time I found my way back home, the scene was still going on. There are debates about self-worth. There are tears. There's shouting. There are guns pulled. There's fisticuffs, and it just never ends. Robbie ultimately gives Crockett the slip, and Crockett chases him through the streets in a pretty great sequence scored to No Guarantees by the new wave group The Nobodies off their 1984 debut album of the same name. No Guarantees is a song you might or might not know, depending on whether you've seen this episode or the 1984 family drama Firstborn. It was released as a single, and it's got a pretty good music video with a Cold War spy theme, which might have received some airplay on MTV, but the song never charted, which is a damn shame. It's a great, bitter, ominous, sinister song, and it seems like it should have been a big hit. The chase scene with Crockett and Robbie is far and away the most memorable part of this episode, and that's due in large part to this song. Robbie tries to give Dorothy a plane ticket and money to get away from his father. Hitmen sent by Robbie's father burst in and try to kill Dorothy. Robbie fights them off but is shot in the process. Crockett and Tubbs arrive in time to kill the hitmen and protect Dorothy. Injured but still alive, Robbie tells Crockett he tried to do the right thing. This is a pretty aggressively mediocre episode. There's always a danger in episodes that focus on guest characters like Dorothy to the exclusion of our series regulars, particularly when those characters aren't very well developed. Dorothy's got a tragic backstory, and certainly a lot of harrowing hardships happen to her over the course of this episode, but her personality isn't defined well enough to make it worth spending all this time with her instead of with characters we're already invested in, like, for instance, Tubbs and Crockett. It's the first outright clunker of season two. 
My instinct is to give it one flamingo, but I'm going to toss it an extra bird just for the use of no guarantees, which has exactly the right bitter, jaded, dangerous tone for Miami Vice. For a few giddy moments, it almost fooled me into thinking I was watching a good episode. Next time, Crockton Tubbs will recruit a messed up junkie to take down her powerful benefactor and get tangled up in a sick and twisted saga. It's a far better episode than this one, so hopefully you'll join me then. Cheers. <laughs>